The brew house was created to capture and share with you the long history of the Genesee Brewery. But the brewery itself isn't half as interesting as the beer and the people who make it. Visit GeneseeBrewHouse.com. Hey there everybody, welcome to the Rochester Press Box presented by our friends at the Genesee Brew House. I am Toby Motika and I am joined by an esteemed panel of colleagues. Mike Catalana, actually a colleague. Yeah, 13 how about Lam. that? Pat Duffy? Yeah. Oh, well, no, I'm like a colleague now. I was on yeah, I your so. Facebook you Live yeah, last week, nice so job. I'm waiting on my contract offer to take over for Mike. And representing for Kyle Williams today. That was a rough, rough well weekend done. for me. Yeah. And a man whose last name knows no equals because it doesn't know enough vowels, Kevin O'Clubja. But if you're playing Scrabble... Oh, I will never man, lose. <laughs> <laughs> Ever hit that triple letter, triple word, oh, it's yeah. over. Uh, Want to get into the Buffalo Bills? Uh, obviously, just wrapping up a six and ten season. By most standards, people are usually feeling a little disappointed. But I don't really know anybody that's looking at this year, guys, and saying, "Boy, what a bummer! What a disappointment!" Is is that the general feeling that you're getting from this Bills team right now? I think so. I mean, and it's odd because coming off a year where they make the playoffs and and expectations, I don't know about expectations, but enthusiasm is high. Finally, they make the playoffs. But there was pretty much a belief that, all right, they still have a lot of building to do, and they do. They, they, the offensive line is, they got to start. It's atrocious. Yeah. It's atrocious. It's, they got to start there. Josh Allen ran for his life a lot. He didn't take a lot of sacks after coming back from his injury. I think he only took seven over the last six games, but... That doesn't really His mobility tell was the reason why. Right. Yeah. And, and he j but it also showed how much he improved in getting rid of the football, knowing when to throw it away, knowing yeah. when to take the sack. I mean, there were a lot of things from him, and obviously this feels like why Bills fans are so excited, right? At the beginning of the year, we talked about if at the end of the year you're 6-10 and 10 and you're happy about Josh Allen, it's a good <sighs> year. They were very lucky, fortunate to get to where they are. Mm -hmm. Uh, they handled the quarterback position as poorly as any team in recent memory. You were left with Josh Allen, Nate Peterman, and nobody else. And obviously, Peterman was a disaster. They didn't have the veteran in there. And they sort of lucked into it. I mean, Derek Anderson came in, didn't do anything on the field for them, but has proven to be a, a stabilizing guy for Allen. And Matt Barkley, at least in that game, showed that he can go into a game as a backup. And then when Allen came back, you know, he said the right thing. Oh, I'm... Um, you know, I'm going to use this as a blessing in disguise and learn. And, and that's what he did. Right. And he became better and he gave everybody hope. I feel better about the franchise at 6 and 10 now than I did at 9 and 7 making the playoffs because I think at least they feel like they have a quarterback. They just got a lot of work to build around them. I feel better about the key pieces on the roster. You got your young linebackers that look really good. Josh Allen looks like he can play football. I am disappointed in the lack of growth and in in-game coaching by the staff on the Bills. And... I mean, let's face it, when you have a first-year offensive coordinator who midway through the season people are like, ah, should we bring him back? Ah, should we fire him midseason? That's not a good thing. I, I want more from McDermott. I want to see McDermott learning from his mistakes. And I don't know, tell me if you think I'm wrong. I don't see McDermott learning from the mistakes that he's made in-game over the last two years. Well, that's, you know, timeouts is a key thing, how you handle the clock. And then, you know, being aggressive as a coach. Now, Josh Allen has shown he can make plays. When you have more confidence in your players, I think in 2019's NFL, you better be more aggressive. I don't think that's his nature. And to Pat's point, I think he's going to have to learn how to do that. I think his team will respond. I mean, you see it even with the Colts this year. They, they took a lot of chances. Yeah. And that's a team that has just been floundering as a franchise. You get luck healthy, and now you're taking more – the chances, I would say, fourth down plays, and you just see how teams can advance. Between now and 2019, the end of 2019, whether it's the offseason or the regular season next year, what is one kind of big thing you expect from this Bills team? What is what is one kind of bold prediction that you're going to make about what's going to happen to them? Bold prediction. I'm, not just, ha six I'm just happy Nate Peterman's not there. I yeah. still, honestly, I really think there's a concern for a coaching staff and a management team that would keep that guy. Yeah. Like, what did they see? It's the same staff going forward, so let's hope that's their one mistake. Good point. But how did they keep him? Yeah, I, I think he was a guy who played way sooner than yeah. he should have. And we've even seen with Josh Allen, a first-round talent, 
who struggled when he got put yeah. out on the field. We all know Peterman shouldn't have been playing, and mm -hmm. I hope for his sake he has a career. I think he's still on Oakland's roster at uh, some point. Set a futures contract this week. Yeah, so he's still still in the league, futures but that's for fine. Him. <laughs> yeah, for him. Uh, weapons and help for yeah. Allen. I mean, he didn't have the O-line. He's got some pieces maybe offensively, but he'll need more of that. That's what I want to see. And I think that he has a chance – next year to really make a jump more than some of these other quarterbacks because I think he already made a jump in his first year. Uh, the prediction is a draft pick picked third round or lower will be your starting running back opening day for the Buffalo Bills. That's a good one. Damn yeah. right Old. Yeah. If you do want me to make a prediction, McDermott will actually start to go for it and will understand it's fourth and two, we're at the 45, let's just go. All yeah. right. He's Mark a defensive guy. Trust your defense. Yeah. Trust the defense. All right, we're talking Buffalo Sabres hockey. Needing to snap out of it when we come back on the Rochester Press Box. The Press Box is brought to you in part by Bay and Goodman Pizza, a local Rochester favorite. Corner of North Winton and Browncroft, Bay and Goodman Pizza. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rochester Press Box presented by the Genesee Brew House talking Sabres hockey right now. Remember that 10 game winning streak? 11 out of 15 coming into Thursday night's game against the Florida Panthers. Uh, what's, what's gone wrong so suddenly for this team? Or is this really just who they've been all along? I think that's really the case. I mean, pucks aren't going in right now, so mm -hmm. they're not scoring goals, and every shot against is magnified, and Carter Hutton's given up a couple bad ones, mm -hmm. one in overtime that cost him a game, one off his glove that I still don't know how it went in. He doesn't either. But now they can't overcome that mistake. Yeah. Before they were winning one-goal games, now they're losing one-goal games. Is this the real Sabres? Probably. Somewhere there's secondary scoring. I don't know where it is. That's, that's the problem. Is it on the roster or not? Reinhardt, he had was some secondary scoring last year. He's getting a ton of assists this year. Yeah. The well, Skinner slowed way down, obviously, but he couldn't keep up that He's pace. a top-line guy now, so he right. can't be your secondary right. scorer. Yeah. I don't know who else you can put on that wing with. I mean, I guess you could put anybody on there, but I don't know who I'd feel comfortable with. It was Palmer at the beginning of the season, but that line really came alive when Reinhardt was parked on that wing with Eichel. I mean... The, the thing that really frustrates me is I'm seeing a lot of Sabres fans saying, go make a trade right now. Go find yourself secondary scoring. You're out of your mind if you think, as fun as this season has been for the Sabres so far, that you are one or two players yeah, away right. from being a legitimate contending Stanley Cup team. And why, with everything you have in the pipeline, the Sabres have one of the best uh, minor league systems players-wise right now, why you would sacrifice any of that for short-term games, short games to win what? Maybe a playoff series right. in the Eastern Conference? Yeah. yeah. I think the 10-game winning streak can really cloud things a little bit it did elevate people's thoughts two years ago the Flyers had a 10 game winning streak and then missed the playoffs <laughs> the next year they got in got bounced out in one round and then this year they're horrible right. they coach got fired and they have Claude Giroux who's and playing gritty. really well and they have gritty <laughs> Well, that might be their second best player. <laughs> and, and what I'm saying is he, that winning streak sounds great early in right. the year but it's a bit of a false it creates false hope. Yes. Because, sure. And even within the team. Now, yeah. the best thing it did for the team was it gave them a great amount of confidence. Right. Yes. But now you can see not quite as confident as they but, were. Well, they still come on them, hard if they're down a goal. It's not quite that. It them. gave them confidence and 20 points. Yeah. So sure. it kept them in the <laughs> sure. running. Yeah. Sure. But here's the thing, like, I mean, you have major pieces that may not even be within the pipeline yet. For example, there's a goalie right now named Uka Pekalukan, and I said that right, right, Kevin? Sure. Okay. <laughs> There's some umlauts in there somewhere. I, I'm, I'm not finished, but this is good. <laughs> He's finished. He's performing very well in the World Junior Championships. Yeah. He was a third-round pick for the Sabres a couple of seasons ago. I mean, that is your starting goalie for the future. It may not be Linus Allmark. My point being, that's what Botterill's planning for. Botterill's planning for four to five to six seasons down the road. This is a surprise. If they're going to keep improving, do not, for God's sake, sacrifice anything to make the team better right now. If it costs you a playoff run this season, it'll be worth it two or three seasons from now. Staying with the goalies, is there any chance they go to Olmark a little more than they have been? He's been better than Hutton over the last few weeks. I don't think so, but maybe. They, maybe. I mean, if you have to have a spark and he performs, well, now maybe you do it again and maybe you just ride the hot goalie. I don't know, but I don't see it happening. Hutton still has only given up you know, a couple of goals a game. C.J. Smith bumped up. How much is this going to mess with the Amherst? Uh, the Amherst haven't been as good, obviously, as they were in the first month, but 
still up near the top of the division there. They've been pretty untouched. Yeah. They lost Pilot. Right. Now they lose Smith. For this point in the season, to have only lost two key parts to call-ups, I mean, that's kind of par for the course, or even less than that. So I think they'll be fine. I mean, the Amherst still have a pretty, pretty decent team. I mean, they're not great, but, you know, they're exciting, at least fun to watch. All right. A lot of hockey left to be played, like it or not, when we come back on the Rochester Press Box. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Today is all about belief. It's not enough for me to believe it. It's not enough for Coach Hill or Coach Barstrom to believe it. You have to be the ones that believe that you are capable of running the way that we all know you are capable of and that those negative thoughts that are coming into your head, you can acknowledge and push away. What's your response to them going to be? Five more meters, five more meters, five more meters. Here's a Press Box Trivia answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rochester Press Box presented by the Genesee Brew House. Uh, on location there from time to time down on St. Paul Street. Make sure to head on over there for lunch, uh, dinner, or a drink sometime. Uh, talking about like it or not, first Antonio Brown. Like it or not, what is going on with Brown and the Pittsburgh That's a Steelers? definite don't like. <laughs> How do you not show up for a guy? I got mad, I left practice, I'm going home. Bye. I'm not coming back either. Is that how is this possible? <laughs> and then he Bye. came back for the game, right? And they were like, uh, no, he's right. hurt. He's hurt. And they wouldn't let him play. Like, where does this attitude come from? I don't care how good you are. Whatever happened to team, I just don't get it's it. It's the Steelers, right? Yeah. What is what is with this Pittsburgh Steelers team? What bothers me about Brown is he's a guy who came from nothing. Like, nobody was expecting right. anything out of him. He r rose up and played phenomenal football and got paid, and he's still... This way. Look, they have a lot of problems there. Ben Roethlisberger is kind of a baby, and he wants things the way he certainly mm -hmm. does. And that's and maybe where it starts. Well, right it does. But this whole idea, the coach is too close with the quarterback. Really, it's 2019 in the NFL. That's what's going to happen a lot of times. But I'm just surprised the guy who really was, you know, wasn't the first-round pick, wasn't that guy, has been that way and has gotten paid there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're going to end up doing with him. But that could also speak to how bad it is within that locker room. Yeah. you got Bell not showing up. you got his teammates bailing on him. you got Roethlisberger throwing, just chucking everybody under the bus right. at every turn throughout his entire career. Listen, there's going to be a lot of blame heaped on A.B., and maybe you're right to do that, but... To me, I say exactly what you just said. For that guy to walk and just not show up tells me something is seriously wrong. Real quick, do they trade him? I think it's tough to trade that a guy. You are a too. mega talent, and you're in a down position based on everybody knowing he'd have to go. I think it'd be tough to trade him. All right. Like it or not, college football showing this past week that it should not expand the college football playoff. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I think four was always the appropriate number. Mm -hmm. I do find it very funny, and this happened with a couple of teams, but I'm going to focus on Georgia, who loses the other night, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Georgia players during the two semifinal games are tweeting out, hey, this is one of the best co four teams in the country, right? Blah, blah, blah. Then go get their behinds handed to them a couple of nights later. Yeah. Listen, there are two, there's one really good college football team mm -hmm. that exists in Alabama, and everybody else is an also-ran. And I do think that under different circumstances, maybe on, even on a different day, the Irish are more competitive, the other teams are more competitive, but anything more than four is just putting these kids who aren't making any money at more exposure for risk before they enter the actual workforce. Right. So no, keep it at four. Uh, even just look at Clemson and Notre Dame. That's supposed to be the 2-3. It was not 
close. So what is Clemson going to do against the seven seed if you let a UCF in there and, and just get their behind whipped, right? It might just be that this year they were these two separated themselves yeah. so much. I think there's the, also the possibility of going to six teams and the first two teams get a bye, which would have been appropriate for this year. But it's all about money, in case you didn't know. I, did. I did know. Yeah. Uh, like it or not, Mike, Thomas Bryant earning himself a starting job with the Washington Wizards. Love it. Love it that he got a chance. Was really surprised the Lakers cut him loose because yeah. he was a low contract track guy. He plays with effort, energy. He's shown he can actually score. Right. I mean, he did have the phenomenal game 14 sure. uh, for 14 that he made every shot that he played. He brings a lot to a team. He's going to earn another contract with the Wizards or somebody else. Good for the local guy. Excellent. Good for Tom. It's going to wrap things up here when we come back on the Rochester Press Box. And now here's this week's MVP experience stat of the week, brought to you by Sport Clips, where it's good to be a guy. No appointment ever needed. Bacon, egg. Cheese. Only one way to make this better. Another one. Dunkin' Go To's. Get two bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches for $5. America runs on Dunkin'. Hey, welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. This segment, Unfinished Business, brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Pat, start us off. Some folks wake up the day that their favorite team schedule is released, and they run and they see who they're playing all season long. I do the same thing for the Rochester Red Wings, but not who they're playing. This week was promotional schedule release day. All of the cool things that are happening and the free things you're going to get when you go through the gates uh, to go watch the rest of the Red Wings play. For example, did you know they're going to have an office night with Stanley from the office making an appearance? Scheduled to appear, a little star on the side. Also, Brian Gianta, Rochester's own Olympian Stanley Cup champion. He's getting a bobblehead. I'm going to be there that night for that, too. Um, the Rochester Red Wings are brilliant at one particular thing, the ballpark experience. Now, there have been other teams in this town, professional sports teams, that have a hard time getting people to the gate. There's so many oppor entertainment options that exist nowadays, and going to these games can be a little bit expensive. The Red Wings realize that. So instead of pretending like you're a diehard baseball fan that wants to go watch minor league baseball on a 90 degree day, they have Stanley from The Office, and they have Brian Gian to Bobblehead Day, and five days where I could bring my dog to the ballpark. I like watching the baseball, but I also like dipping Dots, and I also like getting my Brian Gian to Bobblehead. I like what they do there. And I'm really happy that the Rochester Red Wings understand that I'm not only there for baseball, but I want some free stuff, too. And you want some food. Yeah, I do. Some of that food <laughs> Don't last you, year. What, you forgot the plates bobblehead. Is there a place bobblehead Oh, this yeah. Year? August 8th. Because I was talking. A I don't plates, know you could talk about your time. Just... <laughs> August 8th. So the Buffalo Sabres are not rolling along like they used to be. In fact, it looks like they have a few problems. And there's clamoring them on the fan base. Get secondary scoring. The problem is... They have Jeff Skinner, who doesn't have a contract beyond this year. So, do you mortgage the future and lose Jeff Skinner? Big decision for Jeff or for Jason Bottrell, the GM, because if you don't think, maybe they do think, maybe they know, still, guys leave for greener pastures or greener cities, perhaps? It's possible. So it's a very it's it's a it's a delicate predicament because assets are important for the future, and so is Jeff Skinner. But unless you know you have Skinner, it's tough to trade those guys right now. What about trading Skinner? Haven't we heard that be floated around from time to time? Also a possibility certainly would come with a great return. And that might be the best option, really. I mean, everybody likes Jeff Skinner right now and what he's right. doing. They did in Carolina, too, when he was a rookie and the next year. But, you know, there's a reason. It didn't, whatever happened there, whatever reason he was traded. So... His value at the trade deadline will be higher than whatever they el whatever else they have to offer. So that might be the solution. All right. 
The NFL has eight openings for head coaches. Five of the coaches that were fired were black coaches. There was only seven in the entire National Football League. And of the five who were fired, you could look at two of them and say, come on, those guys deserve, like any other coach, to be fired. Hugh Jackson, who actually went an entire season without winning a game and won one the other year. And then, of course, Marvin Lewis, who had plenty of time and still never won a playoff game. But the guy I want to focus on a little bit more, while Todd Bowles had a chance is Steve Wilkes. Wilkes is the guy that got put in a bad situation in Arizona. Did they not know what they were bringing him in for? I think it was unfair the way he was brought in, got one year with a rookie quarterback and a roster that is flawed. For some reason in Arizona, they think they were better than they were. They're going to go out and hire somebody new now. Maybe it's to help the quarterback. But if you're going to bring a guy in, give him a chance. Because you look in Detroit, Matt Patricia got that job in one year, and he was basically a disaster, another former Patriots head coach. I'm not saying it's involving race, but when you look at it and a coach gets one year like he did, you start to wonder what teams are really looking at. I think other guys like Eric Bieniemy of the Chiefs are going to get a chance and get a head coaching job, and I think those numbers will go back up but a little more patience from organizations when a guy like Anthony Lynn went into a terrible spot mm -hmm. with the Chargers not even having any home games and look at what he's done. Give a guy a chance and see if it can work. Going to start seeing a lot of hirings coming up here soon in the next few weeks too. Yep. All right, guys, thank you, Kevin, Mike, Pat. We'll see you next time. And thank you for joining us on the Rochester Press Box presented by the Genesee Brewhouse.